Live on WFLA Now, this is Run for Fun with running enthusiast Lee Spann. All right, let's go. Welcome back to the WFLA Now Stream Center for this week's episode of Run for Fun. We, of course, designed this show to help more people find the joy in running. Running gets a bad rep as something that's so hard. But there are ways to do it that can make it a whole lot less daunting. I'm your host, Lee Spann. I'm a meteorologist here at WFLA, but I've also been running for about 13 years. And I know when I started out, I did what everyone else does. I go, I would go as hard and as fast as I could go until I couldn't go anymore. And yeah, that's hard. But now I know it's fine to go super easy on some days and really enjoy it. It's just one of the many ways uh, that we run for fun. And helping to teach and guide me all the time is my coach, Maria. Hi, coach. How you doing? I'm doing greatly. How are you today? I am doing much better. Yeah, we, I'm glad you're doing better. You had a rough weekend. <laughs> had a rough couple of weeks. I, I, you know, yeah. we, we, uh, I, 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 first of all, know that it's fun. Running is fun, but there are times when it gets hard, and you have to figure out why. You know, why is it hard when it should when you're doing the things that should be fun? So, you and I worked together for that this week. We did, and I, I constantly tell people it's it's a metaphor for life because in life, we're always going to have challenges and it's no different in running. You got to be prepared for them. Yeah, so we, we went through, is there something physically wrong with me? Is there, is, it was just, is it, was it mental? And it was a little bit of both, but we, uh, we kind of came through on the other side of it. So I'm excited. Yeah. It's easy to run for fun when everything's going well, but can you run for fun when things aren't going well? <laughs> you got to figure out how to make it back, get, you know, get back in the train back on the, on the track. That's right. So that's what we did. And now we're just, uh, a month and a half for my marathon. So we got to yeah. keep that train going. For sure. All right. So well, you see at the bottom of the screen, Coach, that this episode is about trail running. It's very different than a running on the sidewalks, especially, sure you know, the, you get to enjoy nature, which some people would find fun. So that's why we're bringing in Joseph Fuller. Now, he's not only an average trail runner, he actually coordinates trail races. So, Joseph. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on Run for Fun. Oh, yeah. And, and speaking of like Run for Fun and that kind of that metaphor for life, you know, the trail running community, it's, it is fun. You know, a lot of people hang out and even on the trails, you kind of go through those ups and downs. So it is kind of like life. It, it, it most certainly is. We, what were you just saying that, you know, that you kind of get go through the demons that are inside your head while you're out there <laughs> all alone on those trails? Sometimes you do have sit down and go, oh, man, why am I here? But <laughs> It's always a blast. <laughs> All right, There's so nothing like a um, trail running uh, aid station. They're so fun. They have lots of food and yumminess and everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's just like helping out. It's very, it's a very different environment than our, <laughs> than our racing environment. Yeah. So that's kind of what I want people uh, to know about today is of course, all about running in, in, on the trails, but we also want to talk about how it's different, maybe even how it's alike um, when you, you know, we see so many people running out on the sidewalks down near your block that what's the difference is when you take it out into nature. So how do you train? What gear do you need? And also, you know, fun places to go. So I'm going to bring uh, Joseph in here to talk a little bit about how he got into trail running, why he got into it, why he loves it, and, of course, why he w tries to recruit people into <laughs> doing it uh, uh, more often with these races. Yeah, I mean, for me, when I got into trail running, I was kind of a product of, like, I ran cross country in high school. I ran in college. And I was kind of looking for that next next thing. And I was watching like YouTube videos. I'm like, okay, those trails look pretty sweet. Like that's what I that's what I really want to get into. And uh, the first trail race I went to was out at Kroom. And I didn't really know anything. So I came out to volunteer. And uh like Andy Kroom, Andy Matthews, mm -hmm. he's the race director out there, and he just you know welcomed me with open arms. And like that's kind of just like the big like thing with trail running. You know, there's such an open arms for people who just want to show up and either volunteer for their first time or just sign up and go. So we're looking at some pictures here. For if you're if you're on the podcast, you won't be able to see it. But if you're watching us on video, so when you go out into these trails, let's say that you're not on a race, right? You're just sort of how do you find them? How do you stay on them? How do you not get lost? <laughs> <laughs> um, most of them are marked pretty well. Like there's the Florida Trail. They have little orange uh, orange markers on all the trees, and you can kind of just follow that. Or you can just look at the race maps online. You can find them on, like, um, Caltopo, Gaia, 
uh, all trails. Those are, those are some of the apps that have that have the trails marked out and their GPS, so you can actually stay kind of have your location on the phone, and you'll know where you're going. Um, oh wow! And then, how do you train for one of these versus the way I train or the way you know? I, with a nice smooth, smooth paved surface, <laughs> what what kind of gear do I need? That kind of thing. What, what what's different about it? I think luckily here in Florida, we don't really need that 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 different of a type of shoe. You know, because there's trail shoes, they have a little bit more of a lug inside of it to get, give you more of a grip on the trail. But like the, the trails here in Florida are primarily pretty flat. They're not as rooty as like up north. So you can kind of get away with wearing a road shoe out on the trail. And really the biggest thing, you know, is just going out and seeing how it goes. And you just you just hosted a race this week. So t- tell, t- tell me a little bit about it and, and why you thought that was so uh, so interesting with, with the amount of people and the type of people who showed up. Yeah, this weekend uh, it was the inaugural year for the Wild Boar Night Run. It's a trail half marathon. It's out at the Green Swamp in Dade City. And, uh, you know, the race starts at 730. So there's only about... 20 30 minutes of daylight left at that point so you get a nice sunset but with it being such a short distance and it's only 20 dollars in a potluck um you get a lot of people who have never been out on the trail before so it's kind of that uh very welcoming um at price point it's very welcoming it's a shorter distance very entry level attainable distance so really they they come out and they were uh, following the trail markers which had reflective tape on them Okay, that's good. <laughs> and so if someone is, you know, you know we, we try to give people all the all the tools they need to find running fun. And for some people, getting out in nature is fun. But how do they even start? Like, well, what, what would be first? Would you tell someone that says, like, I've never I've never gone on a trail before. What do I need to do before I go out there? Um, I mean, you can look on like Facebook. There's like group. There's different groups all over Tampa and then kind of the greater Tampa Bay as well. And then really just get, find a group and then show up and you'll meet a lot of people and they're very welcoming to like, like, hey, I've been here. The, this is my first time. And they'll be like, oh, well, let me tell you about this story. <laughs> yes, a lot. I'm sure, there are a lot of stories. Uh, Maria, you've gone out on a couple of the trails around here. You, he mentioned Kroom. That's, you, you, you've done that one. Yeah, um, I, I love trail running. Uh, I think it's great. And I think it's really good for for um everybody to do actually studies have shown being in nature helps whether you think it does or not it helps your mental uh, outlook on life so different change of scenery I like it for my own runners because it slows them down we used to do um, all of our long runs in Memphis when I was working with pilgrimage track club we did all almost all of them on trail by time um, not by miles and we would just we'd just go 16 18 miles you know time on feet in the trails and it doesn't beat up your body as much. Um, it's a softer surface. It's a little more giving to your joints. Um, and also we have all these little proprioceptors in our ankles that really kind of get lazy when we're running on pavement all the time. And so when you're going out on the trails, those ankle muscles have to work, uh, harder. So you actually build a more stable, um, leg when you do it that way. Have you found that Joseph, that the difference you know yeah i would definitely agree to that i mean you have the lower impact especially because here in florida there's a lot of like sandier uh surfaces on the trail and then even just going out you'll you'll find that like there's some, just a little bit of elevation a lot more that you can get kind of running through the city and and i am you know, maria you, you were just touching on it a little bit but the uh you are going to feel different. You're going to use muscles that you mm-hmm. normally do not use. So it might, again, the first, you know, the first time you go on a trail run, you may think I'm doing it wrong because I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm hurting so much and I only went, you know, so much shorter than I normally go. So why yeah, are you and, using all those different muscles? Well, it's because the terrain is all constantly changing. Um, you actually have to use your brain a lot more too, because you can't really not pay attention. You have to pay attention to your feet in front of you, or I've fallen on a trail many times because I get distracted easily. But, um, honestly, the push off is not the same. Like you don't have the grip of the ground as much to push off on. So you run slower, especially if you're running in sand, that's like 45 seconds to a minute slower. A lot of people get, a lot of our people get really weird about that. Oh, I run so slow on the trails. And I'm like, 
well, it's all relative, right? Like you need to challenge your body in different ways if you want to stay a, a well-rounded athlete. And Joseph, why do you, why would you tell someone who has only been a road runner like me <laughs> to get out in nature? What, what, what is it that you love about it so much? Well, first I think it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you would say I should run for fun. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it's, it's great to get away from like in the, sometimes in the city, you're kind of in the, that work environment, you're surrounded by work or you're surrounded by businesses. So like just getting out on the trail is kind of that, that pr breath of fresh air that you're not going to get um, kind of in the city. And then two, it, you know, it, it's a lot more open. You know, th the air is fresher. You get all the scenery. So it's nice kind of just to escape out in the trails. And it's a good way to kind of cleanse your mind as well. And um, you, I see you in some of these pictures that we are showing. You have, you do carry stuff with you because there's no... <laughs> You know, there's there's no convenience store to jump into. I mean, everything that you need, you have to carry with you. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll have my uh, hydration vest and I'll put some water in there, some electrolytes, maybe some uh, like the goose and stuff like that. Get a little little calories or, you know, some pack of hot dogs or a sandwich <laughs> or something Depends like on that. how long you're out there, I guess. <laughs> right. So what, um, you know, on a, on a typical week, where are you going to run? Uh, usually I'll go head out to the green swamp since it's kind of near my house. There's a lot of trails out there that you can do, or you, I'll go down the hole in the fence, which is part of the, um, uh, trout Creek. Okay. It's kind of that trout Creek area, which is a little bit closer. And then you also have flatwoods. If you either got the trails or there's like a 10 or 11 mile loop. And that one does have water every two ish miles. Oh, so that helpful. one, that one's very nice. Yeah. So yeah, so do you, yeah, so that one would be one that you would say maybe for a beginner who doesn't have the vest, you want to make sure that you're not going out there with nothing. So that might be a good way to start. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Flatwoods would be a great place for someone to kind of get that entry level kind of start because there's paved on one side and then it's like crushed shell and trail ish on the side, and then you just have that water every couple of miles. It's it's really nice. Joe, do you only run trails? I run on the road for the most part, yeah. but on the weekends, okay. I like a nice trail race or a trail run. Okay. And how um, often are there trail races? Like, what, like, and, and, let's, and let's also talk about the difference between a, a, a road race where you might be running a 5K as fast as you can and what a trail race is like. I'd say the environment, it's a, it's a lot different. Like, you know, if the first place guy falls, second place is going to probably stop to help them get up. That's probably one of the biggest things. It's kind of that sense of community. Like we're in it together. We're in it to get the miles in. Um, and two, like the food, there's always a lot of food. There's usually burgers and hot dogs and stuff at the finish line. Uh, a lot of people just hang out. And even the same thing on, on the trail. There's a lot of people who sign up for these trail races just to hang out and run and talk to people. <laughs> which again not what you're going to see if you're running a, a you know a, a saturday 5k with people i mean this is <laughs> you know it, and and some of them get the i guess the reputation of being very long like a 100 mile or 50 mile or but there are shorter ones like you were just saying Lynn, there was a half marathon one that you you set up yeah there's there's like i have a half marathon a 30k but there's also like um a1 ultra events tampa races they've got some shorter distances out there in croom or um there's another park. I just can't think. Oh, Colt 40 or Colt Creek State Park. Okay. There's some trail races out there. That's like a 45k. So. So so so, so longer. But you but you but you rest. <laughs> You're not running straight through most of the time. You you have some time downtime. Correct. Yeah, and there's aid stations usually like from three miles to six miles apart. So every couple miles you're stopping, refueling, probably talking to the people at the aid station and then picking it back up on the trail. <laughs> It's much more laid back. I really yes. love it when my runners like get a little burned out, especially in the summer, they get kind of burned out of the heat and all that stuff to take an, you know, a long run and go out into the woods. It's usually shaded. Uh, it's just a change of environment. It can really invigorate you a lot more than, than slogging, slogging it out on the Courtney Campbell one more time. So yeah, do that exact same pay, that exact same route you've been doing from your house all summer For long. For sure. For uh, sure. So, uh, I mean, uh, Maria, I do want to go back to talking a little bit about, you know, the actual difference on your body. So clearly we know that, you know, on the pavement, it doesn't have much give. 
So this yeah. has some, some advantages in that it is softer, but it also has some disadvantages as far as, I mean, far as falling. The only dis yeah, the disadvantage is you do risk injury. Um, so I usually say if you if you're in the middle of a marathon cycle and you're running a ton of miles and your legs are tired, if you haven't run trails, don't like three weeks before your race, be like, I'm going to start trails now that cause you know, inevitably we read it on the internet, so we should try it. Right. But, um, I, I would say like, if, if you want to start trail running, pick a cycle, that's like, you know, your 5k or 10k cycle to do your long run in until you get comfortable because you will be extra sore. Um, and, and tired legs can make you want to trip more. Um, we really need to pick up, you need to pick up your feet more, it's harder on your hip flexors because you're lifting your legs more, um, harder on the ankles, uh, but Hey, and if it's, if there's elevation, you're working your, your butt more. So it, it has advantages, but you got to put it in the right place. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you going out there and doing it right okay. now in the well, middle of your marathon cycle. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Twist my arm. Not but that then, I have to twist your arm, right. but, but if you're earlier, get out there because yes. it's so good. And you're running, you are naturally running slower. So, um, you know, you don't have to run 18 miles. You can go run three hours out in the woods and it'll be the same thing. And you're saying it's tougher <laughs> on your ankles and it's tougher on your hip flexors, but is it making them stronger at the same time as working on your balance? Yes. So, yeah. So it's, Absolutely. you know, so while it does hurt in the short run, it's like doing a new, and you're doing basically a, you know, a different exercise than what we're used to. It's harder to balance if you fall. Like I, they used to make fun of me on the trails. Cause I would like catch myself and I'd be like, thank you abs. <laughs> like you're such a dork Maria, but like, <laughs> it is true. Like you have to catch your center of gravity is different. You have to catch yourself and, and it really does work your core muscles a lot more. I want to go back to Joseph and tell me more about, um, what it's like out there. Do you run through big puddles? Are you getting wet? Um, do you, are you, are there insects? Like, tell me, tell me what it's like. Oh, like see, <laughs> Lee is, Lee wants the, the bad stuff about the trail want, so I she wanna, doesn't have to go on them. I just want to give everyone all the information. So what is it like out there when you, I mean, good and bad. Well, some of the trails are more dry, like Flatwoods is, that loop is going to be more dry. Yeah. Whereas like if you hit the trail section, especially if it just rained, it's going to be, there'll be some puddles, but I mean, it's not in the long term. That's, it's not too big of a deal. Okay. Just don't wear your, you know, your nice new shoes. Yeah, Cause they will get a little muddy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's puddles sometimes, but you, sometimes you can just go around them. Uh, I mean, as far as bugs, you know, you'll have like horse flies and mosquitoes, but there's, there's a couple tricks that you could do to that. You can wear the, you know, you can put on bug spray. You can get those little bracelets or some, I think there's like a thing with dryer sheets to keep away horse flies. Okay, you can put like dryer wow. sheets on, on your shirt or something. <laughs> I'm wow, apparently not doing that, that before. I, I haven't tried it, <laughs> but I've seen people out there with like dryer sheets. I'm like, man, what is that? So I had to figure that one out. Well, I know you can use dryer sheets to, um, uh, get the love bugs off the front of your car. So maybe there's something, <laughs> maybe there's something there. Um, and then, so tell me the good parts of it. Tell me, tell me what you're seeing as far as the, you know, the, the fauna, the flora, all that kind of good stuff. I mean, you get a lot of like the floor, like the native Florida plants, like palmettos and a lot of the, the trees and whatnot, the cypress trees. Those are always nice to see. But I think back to Maria's point, sometimes when you're in that, not to say go run in your marathon cycle, yeah. but <laughs> push in the trail run further away from race day. You know, sometimes like you're running on the road every day, every day, every day. It can kind of, mentally it can, it can get a little taxing. You kind of just need that brush of fresh air or like that. Let me just get away and do something different, a little change in the cycle. And that's where like the tra the trails are kind of nice for that. It can kind of like, okay, I'm out here just going to do this thing and I can get right back into the roads after. I mean, I've seen so many cool things on the trail. I think, I, I don't know. I've, we've, we've seen a, we saw a baby deer one time, like in the middle of the trail, like there are just so many things in the tra trail that you can see that you don't see on the road. Um, you know, we used to run in a group and as long as my deal was, I didn't want to be the front person and I didn't want to be the back person in case there was a snake. Cause I didn't want to like run into the snake, but like, if you're in second <laughs> in line, then you're more likely to hit the snake. So I'd say in the middle of the pack, but we used to chase each other. We'd have like five or six people running, you know, 
you know, single file down these trails and trying to keep up with each other was just so fun. Jumping over rocks, jumping over roots. Just, it's so fun. Spider webs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like the first person gets the spider webs. That's that, right? The Is first that person gets the spider webs and the snakes. The last person. <laughs> All right. So, Joseph, uh, we are getting a question on Facebook from Heather. She wants to know if there are trails in Pinellas because I, I, I don't know. Do you know? If, do you know of any like? Well, there's the Pinellas Trail, but it's not Wheaton, necessarily. Wheaton State Park has some trails. Yeah, I think Pinellas even County. too. I think Wheaton Island has a group run as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot about Wheaton Island. Yeah, that's actually that was written up in um, Runner's World. They have a at the very beginning of every uh, issue. They have a rave run, and someone. One time, um, wrote up this whole thing about running in in Weed, uh, Weedon Island State Park. So beautiful. Uh, or, so really for beautiful Heather, there. that is where you should go. So and mm-hmm. she says thank you. So you're welcome. They have good <laughs> paddle boarding there too. Very pretty. That's true. So you can do a little biathlon. Mm-hmm. You can run. Yeah. You can paddle. <laughs> and um, so, what what other trails do you um, do you like to go to, um, Joseph? Is there some somewhere that people can um, you know, if they want to go to hills, where would, where would they go? If they don't want hills, where should they go? Yeah, I think if you're looking for hills crew up toward like that Brooksville area, that's going to have most of your elevation change, uh, you know, trail wise here for like close to the Tampa Bay and then flat basically anywhere almost. But, but anywhere else. Yeah, you know, like that hole back to that hole in the fence, that that little spot by Trout Creek. And then because the, that trail connects, connects into um, Flatwoods. So that's that's a good area. You can get a lot of distance or just short distance out there. And those are all again, they're all well marked, correct? Yep. 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 That's, I, I, I uh, uh, on <laughs> top of everything, I'm also worried about getting lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, there's been numerous times I've gotten lost, and there's been numerous times I've fallen, and I've there's been a lot of tears on trails before, but it's okay. Makes you tougher, Lee. It, yes, and and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never, I never say never. I, I, but right now I'm saying that my coach is telling me I can't do it right now. I'm not going to have to the next training cycle. Yes. And, uh, and maybe when it starts to get a little cooler, that's what I was saying yeah. this morning when I was, um, you know, talking about that this was the episode and that we, what we were talking about. I was like, especially now this morning, you broke that humidity just a little bit. And that may entice people to want to get out into nature again, where you can get, you know, it's not quite as steamy anymore. So, um, yeah. yeah. So after this marathon, I'm never saying never. I'm, I'm, this is why I wanted to learn, like it says at the bottom of the screen, what you need to know before you get out <laughs> there. Because I, I do not like to be surprised. What, um, uh, so what do you, you know, Joseph, you said you do run a lot on pavement during the week and then on the weekends you go out into uh into into nature so what what what's the difference what do you what do you uh, what do you feel is the difference between the two uh well i guess for me it's just convenience because i'll get up at you know three o'clock four o'clock in the morning before work so it's easier just to hit the roads i can just see, see where i'm going there's no traffic on the road yes um but you don't work your like your lower calf muscles and all the different muscles and tendons in your feet stuff like that you know, that you're going to get out of, you know, going to the trail. Um, that's kind of the, probably the biggest difference. But I think, I mean, even on the weekend, I forgot to mention that, like there's the uh, Withacoochee River Park. Uh, there's some trail races out there. Um, and then there's another one kind of down the road as well that those, those are really good because it's a short distance. So you can get a good short three mile, four mile out there as well. That seems, that seems a little more doable. <laughs> that <seems so laughs> That's like, a good place to start for surely, like three or four mile trail run. Yes, yes. I mean, I, clearly I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to get out there and go for, you know, for a, a full half marathon having never done it before. Um, but you know, like I see these pictures and it is gorgeous. So I, it's I, gorgeous, and you feel different. Like literally, I took Sam out last year for the first time in a trail race. He was like so confused because he's like what is happening and then he was like mama you're like a billy goat i'm like (laughs) yeah it's because it just feels like you're just it's so different i cannot tell you how different it is it just feels like you're just challenging yourself in a different way and you have to think you can't you can't just go through the motions as much on a trail you have to think about what you're doing you have to pay attention to what you're doing yeah i don't suggest doing it tired at all um (laughs) Because you have to pay attention, otherwise you're going to fall. <laughs> you're just taking in, like, there's so much, um, like, your eyes are all just so focused yes. on everything around you. And you're really taking, like, wow, look at that big tree. Like, wow, look at that rock. 
And then yeah, just, there's so much to think about and look look around about. I mean, it's so different. The colors are probably the big thing. There's so much color change out there that you're just it's it's a lot more vibrant than running on the road. Yeah, I mean, because you know you mentioned that too, but a lot of people would think we don't have that color change here, but it is. There are, um, you know, there are things things look different out there when they're you know in their natural habitat. They have bright, a little more vibrant sometimes. There's a lot of green. You're like, wow, that is very green. <laughs> and, Joe, what is what is the craziest thing you've seen out on a trail? Like the craziest. Um, well, what I could say on here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did see a bear uh, uh, over. Did you really? I did see a bear before. So that's and probably what did the you do when you saw the, the bear? I stopped and started taking pictures yeah. and walking okay. close. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Did the but, opposite of what you should do. So aren't you supposed to make a lot of racket? I think you're supposed to walk away and walk away. act like you didn't see it. But of course, I took pictures of it because I had to. Like that was my first Florida bear, and I was so excited. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, and only one person only so far. Just or, one. Just, okay. Good. <laughs> they're not that common down here. Yeah. In like this area, they're not not as common. I think toward Kathleen and Lakeland, sometimes you can see them out like toward the Green Swamp, but that's a pretty rare occurrence a lot of them were more toward ocala yeah because i would think that you would have run across literally run across um snakes and alligators do you see alligators out there i mean because i have seen alligators okay, okay. yeah because that's more common yeah i was gonna say know. it's common well, i think maria we saw one. <laughs> and you've seen snakes right yeah yeah, yeah. i saw my yeah. first okay. um what's that striped one called the coral snake? the coral snake i saw my first like coral snake ever a couple months ago and i was so excited i'm like wow look at that like i've never seen that in real life before excited i mean i wouldn't say excited <laughs> excited was not the word that came to mind i don't mind snakes as long as i know they're not poisonous but a coral snake i do know is poisonous. i mean we ran into mo um water moccasins and copperheads on the trails in memphis a lot actually you ran into them or you ran around them? uh there was literally a time i was running with my running partner and i looked down and there was a copperhead in the leaves and i you really couldn't see it and i like literally reached over and i like smacked her and she got up she was what what i was like look down <laughs> and she was like oh, oh thanks thanks, thanks for that thanks. well the coral snake i did jump over good so. yeah I noticed it. And I just had to leap over it, and I stopped to take pictures. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, but it's all part of the game. It's stronger on your hip flexors. If you got to jump, you know, it's good. Because it, it is. Good I mean, I think of it as taking it to a, you know, taking running to a new to a different level. I mean, I think it's. I mean, obviously, yeah. I I know that it would be harder to to get out there, uh, even though you're going slower. You're using so many more muscles and so much more brain power. And honestly, you feel like a kid. Like, that's what you feel like when you're in there, when you're running through the puddles and you're like, like, you don't care that you're dirty. That's not a thing. You just don't care about it. I know you can't imagine that, but you do like, you just wear <laughs> socks, you wear higher socks, you wear trail shoes. You don't care how smelly and dirty you are. And you just feel like a little kid. Like, I can't say enough about it. So good. Yeah. You get that like kiddish, like a sense for adventure. Like when you're yeah. back younger, you're adventuring in the woods like that's it kind of brings you back to that like kid For state. Sure. Y'all, you're convincing me that this is my thing. Like telling a good you, Lee, I'll go do. do it with you. We'll find <laughs> okay. one and we'll do it one halfway between Jacksonville and Tampa. How about okay, that? Okay, yeah, let's we'll do it. The um, very slow, very yeah. short. I don't even maybe some maybe some walking, which is not, not a big a, deal. Not a big deal. Like, like, it's, only not only, it's not encouraged, but you know it's it's expected because you you're not going to be able to run through 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 huge puddles if there is one like you gotta you are expected to walk on trails that's a big thing too because a lot of people they'll do like a run walk method and like that's mm -hmm. pretty common in trail running and yeah. so is walking usually yeah. toward the end you're just I'm, I'm walking but a lot of people that's their game plans to come out and they do a rock a walk run method for their race mm -hmm. so it's a total different ball game Lee. yes it's a it, it, it the the anxiety, or the, yeah, I was going to say the pressure is different. The pressure is not to finish fast. It's yeah. to make sure that you are not falling and that you have, you have the right, um, you know, so that you have the right food and water is all available. That kind of pressure is very different because the idea is just to get through it and, and feel stronger at the end rather than to try to beat someone or beat a time. Well, and let's be clear. There's some very, very, very fast trail let's runners. Let's be clear too. about that. Yes. 
<laughs> Very and, fast. So what did some of your um, participants this weekend, the people who never run at night and a trail, what, what, when, they, when they finished, what was it like for them? Some of them hated it. Some of them <laughs> loved it. <clears throat> but I think for a lot of people, it was just nice to be in a like, controlled environment when it comes to you know, being on a trail at night. Cause I think for the first time running at night, it's already, it's different, especially in the city. You're like, I don't know if I want to run at night, but on a trail, I don't know if I'm going to do that either. Yeah. <laughs> that's also, a, seems that's also a huge step. Yeah. yeah. So it's nice that if there's a way you could go run at night, either with a group of people or just in that kind of controlled setting where, you know, like probably not going to get lost. Uh, this trail's probably marked. Bro, so that scary. <laughs> that's probably the right, biggest uh, thing. I have a question, Jojo, the tra trail bro, uh, <laughs> you know, pooping is really important to us. So, uh, what's the, what's the pooping etiquette for like, if you have to go to the bathroom in the woods, like give it to us straight. Does uh, it no, no surface poops. Try to avoid doing a, don't do that. Cause we all smell it, but you just go uh, off the trail. So surface. And... Okay. Off okay the so, trail. That's, so, so, so a surface <laughs> poop is on the trail. So you would go like in back where the trees are, but don't, don't do it surface. What's that mean? <laughs> Like, don't, like don't, dig don't, a hole, yeah. Hole? Like just dig a little hole oh. of your feet and <laughs> drop it in there, you know, and See, cover it up. That off, actually off makes trail. total sense. I never would have <laughs> thought of that. Like a cat, we are we, we bury it. Yes, like a and cat. then wipe wipe with some leaves. Like find yeah, some find leaves. some good leaves. Yeah, some usually good. a double layer of leaves is double. good for the double doesn't layer. Doesn't break on your fingers. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's good. And would you see? I told you we would learn green, new healthy things. leaves, not the not dried leaves. Yeah, you don't want to use well, dried. Sometimes leaves. Sometimes hard to find, Lee. Sometimes you got to go with what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like green, softer leaves would would would, would be a. Don't go with pine needles. It's not, not going to work out. Very also, well. not pine needles. Palmet palmetto is also not not very friendly. Uh, yeah, yes, I can see that. Also, look out for poison ivy. Yeah. Just so you know. Um, well, Joseph, thank you so much for jo for joining us. Uh, it does seem like you know. I will say, you guys have almost convinced me because these pictures really do, um, you know, make me feel like that would be something to go out would make it more fun, like as opposed to you know, the grinding it out every day in the same, on the same pavement, um, just to take a little break from what we're used to. So, uh, so now, now you run that your events are called skunk ape events. So if people want to find a race so that they can have this structured where they're not out there all alone, they can just go to your website. They have a website. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, okay. you know, I'm in my twenties, so yeah, yeah. you know, curse of the generation on that. I'm big the, on the social media. Yes. But I think the bottom line is like with trail running, it's like the community aspect. It's definitely like a big random family of all backgrounds. It's like an awkward family reunion where everyone comes together. Like, hey, hey, <laughs> hey! You might not know each other's names, but you remember the face. And then I love it. You just run and you hang out after. It's like it's one of the coolest things. So it's like a whole day. Like you go and this is an event for the day. Yeah. Rather than just like you cross the finish line, everybody jumps in their car and goes home. You don't just grab a banana and split, you yeah. know. <laughs> you kind of hang out. Ah, and... I like it. <laughs> you hang out, you have fun, you get to know your fellow fellow trail runners. So everybody, that is Trail Running 101. Thanks to Joseph Fuller <laughs> and Skunk Ape Events. And thanks to, of course, Maria, who told us how it's going it, to, it may hurt, but it's because it's building up your muscles that you normally don't use. And... Um, thanks to Joseph for these pictures that may actually entice me to <laughs> try it. You know, I can be scared of doing something new, right? I'm scared. I, think, I think Joe, Joe, I think we've done well if we can convince Lee to even think about doing it. <laughs> we've like, we've reached some kind of compromise with her. All right. like even think about it. <laughs> Just, uh, the, 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 it's back here. So somewhere way back here in the back of my head. All right. Thank you guys. Um, and of course, run for fun. We'll be back on Tuesday next week at nine 30. Bye. Bye.